Detroit clashing with Atlanta. The second of three games being played here in London this season. Let's check in downstairs for more with Carissa Thompson. Thank you, Tom. Yeah, you mentioned this is the second of three games that are played this year alone. This is the 10th game played in London, part of the International Series. And you know, all three games this year, Tom, sold out in a matter of weeks. Wembley Stadium holds 85,000 people. And I was talking to a bunch of fans before the game and just looking around the stadium. It is incredible. All different teams represented, different players. I was asking them if they uh, enjoy American football. There was no doubt. And if, that, if, if anything, Atlanta is uh, very well represented here as the home team. They have these flags that you'll be seeing fly all game that say rise up. But, you know, I've been effusive in my praise of this place. It's uh, definitely going to be a fun game, guys. It's tough fun. Carissa, thank you very much. Now, Troy Aikman, you were down on the field and thought the condition of the field could be a factor in the game today. I was really surprised when I went down in pregame warm-ups, and I know that Terry Robisky, the wide receivers coach for the Atlanta Falcons, was with the Miami Dolphin organization when they came over a few years ago, and he talked about it being a concern then. He's told his receivers all week long they've got to go with the longer spikes. We'll keep an eye on that, but I do think it's going to be a factor in this game. That was 2007 when it was pouring down rain. It is an open-air stadium, so the conditions will be a factor. We'll do the translation for you there. 15 Celsius converts into 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Did you know how to do that conversion, by the way? Well, I've got an app for that. You know, there is one, right? <laughs> well, the Lions won the toss. They will defer to the second half. And Sam Martin bangs it into the back of the end zone. And out at the 20-yard line comes 29-year-old Philadelphia native Matt Ryan. Team record holder in virtually every passing category in his first five years in the league. Took the Falcons to the playoffs four times, including a trip to the <laughs> NFC Championship. The question today, can they protect him? That's been, really been the question all year. Uh, it's been the question for the last year and a half. I mean, it is amazing what has happened to the offensive line for the Falcons this year as well as a year ago. They're going to come out throwing. Safe throw. And through the hands of Patrick DeMarco, second down and 10. And you know, let's look at some of the guys who could have an impact today, and we really zero in on that line where Matthews is over at left tackle, James Stone, their third center already this year. He stepped in last week in that game against Baltimore, and for an undrafted free agent, I thought he handled himself very well. He clearly was not signed coming into the season that he would be playing in a game that soon, and especially starting a game here against the number one defense in football. What, what, what? With a delay, they give it to Steven Jackson. And a pretty good pickup, a gain of close to seven. And of course, uh, Atlanta trying to get something going on offense against the number one defense in the NFL, and it begins up front. Yeah, and that's just where it starts. I mean, you see Ndamukong Sue and Ziggy Ansah and the rest of that group that they have along that defensive front. They rotate a number of guys. They help keep them fresh. We'll see whether or not the Falcons are able to give Matt Ryan some time to take advantage of some of these weapons that he has outside. Almost appeared as though uh, Ryan fooled his own offensive line. False start, number 70 offense, five yard penalty remains, third down. Well, that was on left tackle Jake Matthews, and one of the areas where he has struggled is against speed rushers. Now, he is facing those in this game, and you know, anytime you're anticipating speed off the edge, you're trying to get an advantage, and that time he just went too soon. So what was a manageable third down, now they're looking at third and eight. And this is something Mike Smith talked about at length, third and long, although here they will convert. And that is Roddy White, a first down up to the 47-yard line. So a good start on third and long. Well, here's Jake Matthews. He's got to draw the block. And he's able to hold him up enough to where Matt Ryan is able to step up in the pocket, has time, a good route. They're on the dig route by Roddy White. And this is what I saw last week when the Saints played the Lions, when they gave Drew Brees time to throw against the Lions, he found some of those intermediate throws. So there is some space there for these receivers to get into and make some catches. 
This time they're pointing at Nick Fairley. Encroachment. Number 98, defense. Five-yard penalty remains. First down. Coach, well, I want to ask you about something. As a former Hall of Fame quarterback, the center today, whom you pointed out a moment ago, James Stone, very interesting. When Ryan is under center, he snaps with his right hand. When he goes out of the shotgun, he snaps with his left hand. And if it was the other way around, Matt Ryan would have some problems. I mean, because the ball comes up entirely different from a left-handed center. When you're underneath the center and taking it from that kind of an exchange, the right-handed center is what every quarterback is accustomed to. Two, and then if all of a sudden you've got a left-handed guy who you haven't been taking snaps with, and he comes in like he did last week, that's that's a recipe for disaster. Fortunately for the Falcons, Stone is able to snap right-handed when the quarterback is under center as he is here, and then he goes to his more natural position left-handed when he's in shotgun. Very interesting. You rarely have ever seen that. There's Jackson on a second down and short after the penalty started this drive against Fairley. And they will convert and move the chains. First down, Atlanta. Well, that's a, this is a good start right now for Atlanta. I mean, think about it. They, they really have not run the ball all that effectively with Steven Jackson. If, you know, if you look at their yard per carry average, it's, it's probably a little higher than it should be because of some of the big runs that Anton Smith has had. But for Steven Jackson to come in and run the ball as efficiently as he has on this drive has got to be exciting for Mike Smith. Three carries, 15 yards, and there's Roddy White once more. And once more, it's a first down to the Detroit 28-yard line. Well, the Falcons had a huge win to begin the year in overtime against New Orleans. They won two of their first three games. But since then, it's been ugly. They've lost four in a row. Their offensive line has just been decimated. They've lost each of the four games during this streak by double digits. They had the drops by White and Jones two weeks ago and just never got it going against a stingy Baltimore defense last Sunday. Sunday, Sunday. Gotta go. Gain of 12. And so it's first down, first catch for Julio Jones. And that is his 50th reception of the year. Uh, Julio Jones, a guy who, you know, really came off to start this season playing exceptionally well. Hasn't been quite as big a factor, but he, you know, hey, he's one of those receivers who's going to draw a lot of attention. And to go back to your point, Tom, as far as the offensive production, it would be easy to say, well, the offensive line has been struggling, which they have. Mike Smith doesn't want to hear about it. You know, he fully expects this team to operate offensively. Make it one way. And wide open in the middle of the field is the tight end, Toy Lolo. And that is the first down inside the 10. First and goal for Atlanta. Well, they got the running game going a little bit, so they, they run the boot off of that action. And Toy Lolo, he finds a nice little hole in that zone. And Matt Ryan hangs in the pocket, knowing he's going to be under some pressure there by Daryl Tapp, and delivers a perfect throw. Of course, he's trying to fill the big shoes of Tony Gonzalez, who retired at the end of last year on first down. No running for Steven Jackson, but by Fairley. Three of the four defensive line starters for this Lions team taken in the first round. Sue, Fairley, and Ansa a year ago. Well, this is a Detroit defense, Tom, that, that hasn't given up points, you know, in the first quarter here in many weeks. And in this opening drive here for Atlanta, is sure impressive. Ten play of this drive, second and goal from the seven. Nice catch, and into the end zone goes Devontae Freeman, and what an impressive drive for Atlanta. Nifty one-handed reception there by the rookie out of Florida State. Well, they get Devontae Freeman on a swing route. He's going to swing out here, and Matt Ryan is able to lay it over the top, and then it's just a matter of whether or not Freeman can get to the end zone before getting tackled, and just an outstanding job offensively of execution, both throwing and protection, coming away with a touchdown. But how about that? You grew up your whole life in Freeman's case in Miami, Florida. You played collegiately at Florida State. Where's your first NFL touchdown? London, England.
Falcons offense from two years ago when this team marched all the way to the NFC Championship game. Well, you talked about the lack of production offensively. It has decreased each of the last four weeks, and so a real confidence builder for them to be playing against this defense and have the drive that they just had to start this game. On five out of six, this is Jeremy Ross, and he'll take a knee. And when we return, Matthew Stafford and the Lions will get the ball for the first time, but it's a good start for the Falcons, who have lost four in a row. Game is sponsored by Bud Light, who reminds fans to stay in the game and drink responsibly. Welcome back to Wembley Stadium in London, England. Coming your way bright and early, especially for those out on the West Coast. It's really early. Early for those pregame guys, right? They said <laughs> Howie and Terry weren't even in there this morning. Matthew Stafford's next touchdown will break the Lions franchise record which he shares with the great Bobby Lane. And of course, they share the same hometown. Yeah, how about that? You know, right there in Highland Park, Dallas, Texas. And I know when Matt was coming out from the University of Georgia, he was real excited, of course, number one pick. But De Detroit is where he wanted to go play. You know, and Detroit had obviously come off some tough years. But he got drafted by the team that he was hoping to go to. Coming out, throwing on first down. And the catch is made by who else? Golden Tate. Well, he has been spectacular, especially in the absence of Calvin Johnson. They're without him today. So the tight end situation becomes very important. Their top three guys on the depth chart are out. It's pretty remarkable. You know, on the one hand, you've got the Falcons offensive line that's been injured. And for the, for the Lions, it's been they're skilled players and you know, when you're without Calvin Johnson and Brandon Pettigrew and Reggie Bush that's quite a trio they have won both games without Calvin Johnson they have a bye next week they'd like to have him back after the bye as there's a catch once more made by Golden Tate his 50th catch already this year so you have Pettigrew you have Fourier and Ebron the number one pick out of North Carolina, all inactive today. Yeah, the tight end position has, has really been decimated here for Detroit, and, and now you've got some guys. You know, Jordan Thompson came in last week. He was a practice squad player, and then they signed Kellen Davis this week, and I don't expect a lot of balls to be thrown to tight ends today. Just to get the playoff in time, Stafford under heavy pressure and throws into the ground incomplete. Had to get rid of it in the grass, could appear to Troy Bierman, second down and 10. Seem to be a lot of confusion at the line of scrimmage. Matthew Stafford adjusting the blocking up front, as you saw, and then he was able to get pressure. The Atlanta Falcons were able to. He was fortunate, really, to get that out without getting sacked. It should be noted that Matthew Stafford is playing without his second-year right tackle, Adrian Waddle. The fourth game he's missed already this season, and so they have the former Atlanta Falcon, Garrett Reynolds, play at right tackle. Penalty flag down after a nice run by Riddick. Defensively, it's been a it's been a tough go so far for this Falcon team. Five-yard penalty remains second down. So that's on Dominic Raiola, their 14th year center. Well, it has been. It's been a tough year for the Falcons overall defensively. Although the last couple of weeks, you know, there has been some improvement. I think when you watch them play, Tom, they they play hard. They play with great effort, and that's what that everyone would expect. That the biggest problem that I've seen from Atlanta is that they've just given up way too many big plays and they've got to stop that first. Second down at 20, they lay it off to Theo Riddick. He's shot down right at the 30 yard line. So to bring up third down and long for the Lions on their opening possession. You know, with some of these 
some of these injuries that we've talked about for Detroit. You know, when you're a defense and you've been giving up a lot of big plays and you're playing the Lions, you're thinking, well, how are we going to be able to slow down Calvin Johnson? And with him not in the lineup, you know, that's a that's a huge weapon that they don't have to concern themselves with. Fuller. So on their first possession of this opening quarter, the Lions will punt it away. That's yeah, a nice job. The Lions, they had something going, and then the holding penalty on Dominic Riola really stopped that drive. And you know, the Falcons facing their third and long and, and able to get off the field and force a punt. So a, a good start here in this first quarter for Atlanta. Early this season, Devin Hester. Became officially the NFL's record holder with 20 return touchdowns. 14 of those 20 have come on punt return, including a 62 yarder this year against Tampa Bay. From the 24 yard line, breaks it to the outside, cross the 30, and is shoved out of bounds, crossing the 40 up to the 43 yard line. They'll spot it at the 44. 20 yard return by Devin Hester. 7-0 Atlanta in front. Fox is sponsored by Ford. Beautiful things happen when you go further. By the new Cricket Wireless, something to smile about. And by Burger King. For a limited time, get 10 chicken nuggets for just $1.49. Beautiful tower bridge, a combined drawbridge and suspension bridge opened all the way back in 1894. We were on a nice little cruise down the River Thames a couple of nights ago. It was really nice night. It's been a great week. It really has been very enjoyable. League's done a great job. And what a spectacular city. I didn't realize you were such a man of the sea. You know, out there, you, you had the whole look about you out yeah. there. <laughs> you never knew that, huh? No, I didn't. Yeah. Uh, you ought to get to Dallas more often. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's been a great week. It's. You know, now the three games they're having here in London this year, and then of course this one being broadcast nationally back to the United States. And people have been awesome. It's been a fun time. Uh, the shotgun, and right at the first down marker, and then well beyond it after the catch by Julio Jones broke a tackle of Glover Quinn, and that is a first down to the Detroit 39-yard line. Well, Julio Jones, he gets a free release off the line of scrimmage and you know, playing the zone coverages, and he gets in there knowing he's going to take a hit, but another nice conversion for this Atlanta offense, and they're getting the ball out of Matt Ryan's hands quickly when they've had to, and it's been working effectively for this team. Line is hit on six in a row. And again, three on first down. Dominic and Sue wrapping up Steven Jackson. Now you look at this offensive line, you go all the way back to training camp. Their left tackle, Sam Baker, injured for a second straight year, so they moved the rookie Jake Matthews from right tackle to left tackle. Lamar Holmes takes over again at right tackle. He was a starter a year ago. He gets hurt. They go through Joe Hawley, Peter Collins in the center position before Stone today. And we thought Gabe Carini was starting at right tackle. When in fact it has been Ryan Schrader outside of one play in this game. And very good protection. And looking to the end zone. Incomplete. There is a penalty flag behind the line of scrimmage. Illegal use of hands, hands to the face. Number 70. Offense. 10 yard penalty. Well, that's on left tackle Jake Matthews. He's already had a penalty in this game. Here he is. Second down. Take a look. They called him for hands to the face, and there's the right hand that gets underneath the headgear. You know, good call there. You talk about all these changes along the offensive line, and there's Mike Tice, and he's lost even more hair this season here in Atlanta. You know, I mean, he has had his hands full this season with the shuffling that he's had to 
come up with the fifth different offensive line combination this season. Screen set up to Jaquiz Rogers. Oh, he took a lick from DeAndre Levy. But manages to get beyond the original line of scrimmage, so certainly third and much more manageable after the penalty. Well, there's no doubt that that was a, it was a nice pickup to make this a more manageable third down, and, and we talked about it a little bit earlier. Th you know, third down for the Falcons here in recent weeks, they've just been terrible in converting. Part of that is they've had so many long down situations. Now here they are looking at third and eight, but at least in this game, they got off to a good start. Blitz coming. And a perfect throw. A first down to the 23-yard line, and they welcome back Harry Douglas. Injured in week three, his foot enacted the last four, and he's out there today. Well, they're glad to have him back. He's a slot receiver. It's an excellent job off the line of scrimmage, and the route that he's able to run to create the separation. That's, the, that's what they've missed, not having him out on the field. They've had to rely more on Devin Hester in the slot position and I know in visiting with Matt Ryan and Terry Rubisky they were sure excited about Harry Douglas being back in the lineup this afternoon. First down they're going to throw it again piling up the yards Atlanta and look into the corner of the end zone contact made. Darius Slay getting tangled up it appeared with Roddy White. Slay, a young man who has benched three games into his rookie year. Pass interference, the number 23 defense. The foul occurred in the end zone. The ball be placed on the one-yard line. Automatic first down. Terrell Austin told us he's their best cover corner. Well, he's he's got the most talent of the group. Now you see a ball that they're throwing to allow Roddy Watt to come back and make a play, and there's contact. It's hard on a defensive back. It's hard when you know, you're trying to play the receiver and then the receiver comes back to work through the ball and oftentimes there's contact as there was. Play faked back to the end zone. Touchdown Bear Pasco. His first catch, his first touchdown as a Falcon. And with 2.53 here to play in the opening quarter, the number one ranked defense of the NFL is getting picked apart. Well, Bear Pasco does an outstanding job of selling the run and then leaking into the end zone. That's why he's as open as he is, and so the play action, they've been running the ball successfully here in this first quarter, and on the one-yard line, it puts the defense in a real bind, and the, the linebackers especially, it's an outstanding job. Point out is good. Ryan has already hit seven different receivers, including a couple of touchdowns. 14 nothing Falcons. Welcome back to Wembley Stadium in London, England. 14 nothing after the touchdown pass. Matt Ryan to Bear Pasco, the former New York Giant. First time he's touched the ball with his new team. Talked about this Lions defense in dominant fashion and not allowed a single point in the opening quarter over their last three games. And so far, it has gone Atlanta's way. They got the big return by Hester. We'll see if Stafford can get something going for Detroit. A dominant start for Matt Ryan and the Atlanta Falcons. This is a home game for Atlanta. You know, it's so interesting, a lengthy conversation we had yesterday with first-year Lions head coach Jim Caldwell about all of the research, the data that both of these teams took a look at, studied when making determinations about when they would come over here, how they would handle their players once they landed. As far as trying to get them into good sleeping patterns, ball is loose. And it looked like Joy Bell just stuck a paw out there and, and grabbed a hold of it before a Falcon could find it. So second down for the Lions after they nearly turned it over. And Joy Bell never even gets his arm up. I, you know, it almost looked like he wasn't expecting the handoff. He gave 
Matthew Stafford, no pocket whatsoever to place the ball. This could not have been a worse start for this Detroit Lion team. So a loss of five, second down and 15. And Stafford works out of the shotgun. Good protection. And sitting down in the middle of the field and making a catch is Corey Fuller. Going back to our conversation, as that appears to be enough for a first down right at the marker, maybe just short. Now they pulled it back about a half yard short. I thought it was very interesting when Coach Caldwell talked about, you know, we looked at how teams actually did the week before they came here and then how they did once they got here. Well, they spent a lot of time, as you've pointed out, you know, really evaluating the teams that have played over here in London and what their schedules were like and a lot of thought that went into it. And so far, it's not reaped any benefits to this team. They give it to the fullback, Jed Collins, on third and inches, and it's a first down. Yeah, I do think earlier on, with these international games that teams would come later in the week and and what's really been proven through it all is as much as teams would prefer to come in late be gone as little as possible it it really is just too difficult too difficult on on the body to adjust to the time change and i don't know it makes me wonder about whether or not a franchise is really viable here in london but it's it's been awesome and, the, and there are a lot of American football fans here in the air. Nearly a tackle behind the line of scrimmage, but getting back to the line of scrimmage after breaking one from Josh Wilson. These Lions already with a win over the Green Bay Packers this year. They have a trip to Green Bay remaining late in the season, but tied atop the NFC North. Well, they're tied right now, but, you know, have already beaten. Green Bay earlier in the season, so that, you know they're half a game up. But that race should get exciting as we move through the second half of the season. Second down and 12, and Stafford will tuck it away. Well, he nearly had that football stripped from behind, and is able to slide down short of the first down and that will be the final play of the opening quarter a quarter dominated by the underdog falcons we're back after a word from your local fox station it's only the start of the second quarter but you get a feeling that the detroit lions need to convert on this third down and two already trailing 14 nothing It's coming. Protection holds up and a penalty flag comes down. And coverage was Robert Alford on Corey Fuller. Yeah, there was clearly contact at the top of this Pass round as Corey Fuller is trying to come out defense, of the break. Automatic. First down. Robert Alford, he's he's a young guy. He's a second year player. He's a second round pick a year ago. That, you know, really has been impacted by the points of emphasis by the league this year with regards to illegal contact, pass interference, I and mean, they're calling it close. And he just is, he's not adjusted the way that Mike Smith would hope that he would. Handed off to Troy Bell, who grew up in Benton Harbor, Michigan. Former Harlan Hill Award winner, that's Division II football's equivalent of the Heisman Trophy. Waved seven times by four different organizations, and he has become a rock-solid player for this Lions team since they gave him a chance two years ago. Yeah, I like him. I, I just think he's a solid player. I mean, he's not flashy in any one particular area, but he's a good, solid runner. He's good out of the backfield catching the football, and he's also very good in pass protection. So when Reggie puts down, they're fortunate they've got a guy who's as versatile as he is. They'll fake it to Bell. And into the hands of Ross, and he has a first down. Shoved backwards, but appeared to have enough forward progress to get the first down. The ball squirted out of there, which may have come back behind where he needed to get to a first down. Tough to tell along the sideline. Well, he had the first down, it appeared to me, initially. And then, yeah, once the ball came out, and now they're moving the chains. They're saying that it was, in fact, a first down. 
We talk about this offense for the Lions. You know, all these years that Matthew Stafford has been here, Scott Linehan had been his offensive coordinator. New offense when Jim Caldwell came in this year. Bell off the right side inside the 40 down to the 37 yard line. What a day on Fox. NFL all day rolling right into tonight. Offensive explosion by the Giants in game four to even a series at two apiece. Madison Bumgarner. My oh my has he been good. He'll get the ball for the Giants. And he has a nickname, Big Game James Shields, but it has not gone that way so far in this postseason as he tries to get it turned around. They are really leaning on Shields tonight, game five. Beautiful pass, catch by Golden Tate, took a big hit from Lowry, and it's a first down of the 15. Boy, it's a well-run route by Golden Tate. You see he's going to work towards the sideline, but you're trying to fit it in the hole there before the safety comes over. Now, in years past, you know, they would have called that a completion because there was no such thing as a force out. Now it doesn't matter. It's a great job by the safety coming over the top and making a play. Dwight Lowry. Which they brought in Lowry as a free agent and to replace the former pro bowler Thomas Deku. And... Uh, Tate appears to be limping around a little bit, and we've already talked about all of the hits that this Lions team has taken from an injury standpoint to their position players, Troy Aikman. I mean, the last thing in the world that Jim Caldwell wants to think about now is not having Golden Tate. Well, that would be uh, about as big a blow as they can have to this team here this afternoon because they've gotten into a game that they just didn't anticipate down two scores. And without your key players, the only guy they've really been able to rely on this season consistently has been Golden Tate. Carissa Thompson, how about it? Well, you mentioned he's looking a little stiff. Before this series started, you guys, he was on the sideline with a heat pack on his lower right back, kind of aching a little bit. He was quick to get up when most guys jogged out to the field and he walked. And now with that big hit he just took, I'll continue to keep an eye on it. But that's what's going on in his lower right back. So he's an impressive young man. Grew up in Tennessee, played collegiately at Notre Dame. Signed him as a nice number two receiver compliment to Calvin Johnson. And for three weeks in a row now, he has to be the main guy. Stafford on third down, looking for Tate incomplete. Josh Wilson in coverage. So once more, the Detroit Lions are not going to get to the end zone. Now the question becomes, and of course that's been the number one drama, is the field goal kicker for this Lions team. They have gone through three of them. Nate Fries, Alex Henry. And most recently, their kicker, Matt Crater, although now they're going to send out the punt unit in Sam Martin. Yeah, that'd be a pretty long attempt if we were going to try it from here on the field, but... You and I have seen the Dallas Cowboys the last couple of weeks. You can mark it down, Dan Bailey would have been trotting out there on that field as that one is dropped inside the 10-yard line. Crowd of better than 80,000 at Wembley Stadium, the new Wembley Stadium in London. 12.40 to play until halftime, and it's been all about the Atlanta Falcons on offense so far, and they have the football with a 14-0 lead. Anton Smith, one of the four running backs they have used today in the game already, but the story, that offensive line trick, when you wondered, could they protect against this defensive front? Can't argue with nine out of ten. Not at all. I mean, they've done a nice job. I, I can't recall staff or excuse me, Matt Ryan, you know, really getting hit as a result of offensive line play. He did on the one bootleg, but they've done a nice job and they've been able to hold it at times and take the shots down the field. Dominican Sue left set Smith trying to get behind that offensive line. So to bring up a third down and nine. Well, big third down here for this Detroit defense. And, you know, so far, they've only had two opportunities, but they've been unable to stop them on third down and down 14 to nothing. You know, 
the Detroit Lions have always been able to rely on this defense to keep the game close and got to get the ball back to this offense with good field position get off the field on this down Ryan puts it up top and was Jones able to come in no he was not out of bounds he appeared to look up a little bit late that just gives you an idea of the marvelous athletic ability of some of these players. Jones at the last second looking before making the catch and injured is Nick Fairley. <laughs> Former number one pick out of Auburn. As they take a look at him, we will step aside. Well, they're just now getting Nick Fairley up on his feet, although clearly needing a lot of help. As they're going to take him, it appears, right to the sideline. Yeah, well, here's Fairley here. He, they run a twist up front on both sides. Fairley comes in and gets a hit on Matt Ryan, and then Dominican Sue is the one who takes out Nick Fairley, and that's, that's when the injury occurs. Right at the end of this play, he gets bent over, and you know, immediately Fairley grabs for his right knee. Boy, that just, uh, that's painful to see it. You think about a man, I think, you know, Troy, obviously you were down there for so many great seasons and got hit by guys the size of, of Nick Fairley. But when you see a, a man the size of Indomitian Sue and you're not expecting it, and all of a sudden you're getting leveled without even seeing it coming. I think we often lose sight of violence and the contact and that kind of impact. Calling a fair catch is Jeremy Ross. We certainly hope Sue is okay, or rather Fairley is okay. They're going to take a look at him immediately. And, and so far, this Atlanta Falcons team, you said it from the very beginning, can they protect their quarterback, Matt and Ryan? And so far, that probably has been a story of this game. Well, they've done an outstanding job. I mean, they're facing a really good defensive front, but they've held their own, and they've allowed Matt Ryan to make some key throws. And now here they are, and they're up. 14 to nothing. I think this is an important drive for the Lions. It was a good stop there defensively and not yielding any more points. But you just look at the Lions offensively and you say, where is the production going to come from? Well, Golden Tate is the answer to that question, and now he's banged up himself as our own Chris Thompson reporter. For those of you just perhaps uh, getting up or maybe getting back from church and turning into a, an early Sunday morning game, these Lions are without for a third consecutive week. Their perennial Pro Bowl wide receiver in Calvin Johnson. They are without Reggie Bush, who tried to come back from an ankle injury last week. Only had four carries for 10 yards, was not anywhere near 100% after starting the game. And they're without all three of their top three, anyway, tight ends in Pettigrew, Fourier, and Ebron. Kellen Davis, former Michigan State star, whom they just signed this week. Yeah, you you kind of wonder just how much of this offense he really even knows. I'm sure he only knows a few of the routes. You know, there's no way he can know the entire playbook. How about it, Carissa Thompson? Well, you know what's funny about that, you guys? He was signed on Monday, as you were saying, but a big part to why he was signed and so quickly is because he had a passport, you guys. They had to get on a plane and make sure that he could actually come here. Marissa, thank you very much. This is a third down and 11. We'd like to find a passport here to convert on a third down. Dangerous throw right into double coverage. And again, he had an eye on Golden Tate. He took a hit from O.C. Human Europe did Matthew Stafford and the Lions will punt again. Yeah, Riley Reef, the left tackle, he's the one who is expected to block O.C. Manure and O.C. Manure puts an inside move on him and, and just has a straight shot on Matthew Stafford. So a great job defensively being able to get off the field. 
you know, we've talked about uh, a lot already today protecting Matt Ryan. So how about protecting Matthew Stafford? He's already been sacked 24 times this year. And that one will bounce. Hester will let it bounce. And it will be down at the 11 yard line. So Stafford and the Lions getting knocked around a little bit here in London. The game is sponsored by Pizza Hut. Find the best deals at PizzaHut.com. You, know, you look around Wembley Stadium and you see the, the jerseys. Now, normally this would be a home game for the Atlanta Falcons. You'd see all the red, and, you know, the Roddy White, the Julio Jones, Matt Ryan, on and on and on. We have seen virtually every team represented coming into the stadium here today. Yeah, 80,000 plus and, and you know, not all of them are Falcons or Lions fans. You're right. They're, they're American football fans, most of them. And you said they're all represented. Dropped off once more to the tight end. Troy Lolo, and he's able to gain a little better than 10 yards. So a first down for the Atlanta Falcons. Well, now they're going to... Get Nick Fairley onto a cart. Fairley had a very dramatic training camp where he was demoted off the first team by head coach Jim Caldwell, and Caldwell said he earned his way back into that starting slot. DeAndre Levy, ever since they brought him in from Wisconsin, all he does is find people that have the football. You mentioned Jim Caldwell, and you know, to a man, they talk about just his style and his approach and how direct and honest he is with the players. There's no drama in Detroit, as apparently there has been for a number of years prior to his arrival. And he doesn't always tell the players what they want to hear, but he's very honest with them. The guys have liked that. And Nick Fairley, he was one of those guys, as you said, he was a little slow to kind of buy into what they expected, but he eventually did, and he's had a good season. First time we've seen Ryan under a lot of pressure. And along the sideline, they are saying that is a catch for a first down up to the 34-yard line by Harry Douglas. What a throw that was. Well, it was really nice, and it, and it takes protection in order for Matt Ryan to even be able to get back out here to Harry Douglas. Take a look. Yep, looked to me like he gets both feet down, but... Matt Ryan initially is looking to his right. It's not there. He's able to regroup. Last week, I know, against Baltimore, he would never have gotten that ball out. Sacked five times, hit a number of other times. He, if he didn't get the ball out so quick, he'd have been sacked at least 10 times in that game. And they get it into the hands of Julio Jones. He's into the open field, run out of bounds, right at the 50. And let's get more on the condition of Nick Fairley from Carissa Thompson. Yeah, unfortunately for the Detroit Lions, another guy out with injury. Nick Fairley will not return. You saw him being carted off there. He kept pointing to the inside of his right knee. They wrapped it with a bunch of ice. He was able to put a little bit of weight on it, but you guys were talking about sort of this team mentality that Jim Caldwell has instilled. Remember yesterday they had on those sweatshirts that said family and brother, brothers? Calvin Johnson and Adamican Sue were the first guys over there to see how he was doing. And now they're uh, looking at another injured line in the veteran Rasheen Mathis. Well, and don't forget, the guy who has been backing up, Nick Fairley, C.J. Mosley, he got sent home yesterday uh, for conduct detrimental. I don't know exactly what he did or didn't do, but it was enough to have Jim Caldwell send him back to the States. And so they are somewhat shorthanded now at that position. Caron Reed is a rookie and a fifth-round pick out of Princeton. Only the 14th player ever drafted out of that university. And really, just a, he's a raw player. He's a fifth-round pick, and you know, he's adjusting to NFL-caliber talent. You know, he didn't face this type of talent coming out of the Ivy League, but they like what they've what he has shown so far. He just just needs more experience. Well, you talked about the field condition before the game ever started. You were down there, Troy Aikman, and they're bringing out the portable cleat clean. Yeah, you can see that it's. It's starting to get chewed up, and it, well, you talked about the Miami game a few years back when it rained during that game. The, the field was was pretty wet down there this morning. First down, and then just a little drop over the top of the line into the hands of 
Jock Quiz Rogers, and that is another significant gain. Beautifully executed and designed play. Of course, a full day of the NFL. We're just getting warmed up right here on Fox. Full slate of the Fox NFL Sunday pregame show. One o'clock games, including the Bears and the Patriots. And then later, the Eagles and the Cardinals, a pair of once beaten teams. Yeah, that's going to be a great matchup and, and two teams that, that will be in the postseason. So uh, a lot of implications in that game this afternoon between those two. Freeman who had a touchdown on the first drive of the game for the Falcons off to the left side and picks up two so that Arizona Cardinals team you know when the year began people forget they won 10 games a year ago you like them hanging in there for the long haul with both the 49ers and the Seahawks I do we had Arizona earlier this year and Carson Palmer did not play in that game but you can see what he's been able to do when he's been on the field it certainly helps them with his return and that's a, that's a really good football team out there in the desert. They also brought him back. He out of bounds and now draw a penalty flag. Now that is one area where the Lions have made significant improvement. A highly penalized team during the entire Jim Schwartz regime. Of course, it's not all on him, but this is the kind of penalty they have made the last number of years. Yeah, he had a bow. He comes over and... You know, at the end of this play, I, I think it's just more frustration. They, he got a slight grab of the face mask as well, but they're out of bounds now, and that's why the penalty came in. He throws him to the ground, a very physical player, but I think frustration is starting to set in with this Detroit After team. After the player went out of bounds, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. You know, they gave up a lot of yards last week to the New Orleans Saints, but they're not accustomed to having a team do what the Falcons are doing to them in this one and something they didn't expect you know with the Falcons who have been struggling offensively and I'm sure they've been watching the film and the offensive line and felt that they were going to be able to take advantage of this group and so far that hasn't happened easy 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 rock it rock it rock it rock it Sunday Sunday gotta go Watson chasing Ryan spins away and then an interception in the end zone into the hands of Rasheed Mathis. Mathis still on his feet. Out across the 30. To the 35. Across the 40. And nothing but green in front of him. There is a penalty flag down back in the line of scrimmage. Mathis is going to need oxygen to get to the end zone, which he does. And there are penalty flags at one end of the field and at the other end of the field. That is a 103-yard return for Rasheen Mathis. Now the question is, does it stand? Well, the first penalty that was thrown was in the end zone at the point that Rasheen Mathis had the interception. So was it pass interference on Mathis or is it going to be offensive pass interference? There was contact when the ball was thrown. And the officials are huddled up now to try to sort this out. Here's the play. We'll take a look at it. Well, I think that's going to be called on Rasheen Mathis. With the contact, you see the pushing and shoving at the top of that route as Julio Jones works back to the quarterback. There were fouls by both teams prior to the interception. Pass interference. Pass interference number 22. During the return, personal foul, illegal low block. Number two of the offense, by rule, both fouls will offset. We'll replay the down. How about First that? Down. So that 103-yard interception return for a touchdown will not stand. There's Matt Ryan. He comes in. He's trying to make a, a play and just blow it up as, as best a quarterback can. And, and that's where that penalty came from. But... Rasheen Mathis, 34 years old, he, he's going to need oxygen because he was, he was struggling get, going 100 yards, getting that into the end zone. I needed oxygen watching him. <laughs> so he's been a nice addition to this team, though. He was on the street after 10 solid years in Jacksonville, and he was content to stay home. 
But after injuries in training camp last year, they brought him in. He wound up being a starter. He came in for Darius Slay and provided great leadership for the club. And like you talk to Mike Smith, he raves about all those secondary players and the leadership they provide. Strong, powerful running by Steven Jackson. So what a turn of events after the penalty on the pass interference call. Excuse me, Tom, not Mike Smith, but Jim Caldwell. And, you know, in fact, what was interesting is he said in every position room on the team, he's got great leaders in each of those rooms, and he feels that's been vital to their success. Second down, and Jackson for Get enough for the first down. It'll be first and goal for the Falcons, who have lost four in a row. They only have two wins. But that doesn't necessarily mean you're buried inside this NFC South. No, it's pretty bunched up, as you see. There's still a lot of football left to be played. And I think right now, looking at this, Tom, that the, the Lions, you know, they had the one turnover. There was a penalty. They need to try to get one here. And Jackson tries to stretch out. Did he break the plane before his knee came down? It appears as though he'll be down at the one-yard line. And once more, it's hurry-up mode for Atlanta. Detroit, you know, they just, they just seem to be pretty gassed here in this first half. Hey, easy, 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 easy. Missile, 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 missile. Gun, gun, gun. Sunday, Sunday. Let's go. And complete second and goal. And now it becomes. Third down and goal after the incompletion. Well, here's that run by Steven Jackson. And yeah, that was an, actually a good job. The left elbow was on the ground before the ball got stretched. So now a, a big third down for both these teams. Detroit, it's just hard to imagine them getting down three touchdowns, although Matthew Stafford, we've seen it over and over, him bring this team back. Jackson this time. Untouched into the end zone. Neither one of these teams remotely resembling what we have seen from each through the first seven weeks of this season. Right guard Osimo, he comes out, he pulls, and really an excellent job by him. And then Steven Jackson just runs off that block. And so a great job of finishing. This is a Falcons offense that has been outstanding this year in the red zone. And, boy, they have been good here in this first half. A big penalty. Taking the play of 103 interception return for a touchdown. Atlanta gets the ball back, cashes in, and it's a... Dejected Lions team trailing 21 nothing. A rare sighting of the sunshine here in London. It's been pretty nice weather temperature wise here, but uh, that's not a common occurrence seeing that big bright thing in the sky. <laughs> it came out a couple of times during the week, but you're right. For the most I part, I've been taking a nap. You were trying to get caught up in the time difference. Stafford and the Lions have plenty of time. Three timeouts remaining. And 3.45 on the clock. The original Wembley Stadium opened back in 1923. Served as host to the 1948 Olympic Games. One of the great memories in World Cup history when England beat West Germany back in 1966. They tore old Wembley down in 2003 and opened the new Wembley in 2007. And that is where every year in this venue, there has been at least one NFL regular season game played. Three of them this year. Set up the screen to Theo Riddick. See what Matthew Stafford's able to get going. We've talked about it. There's not a lot of guys out there that he's been throwing the football too much. But Golden Tate 
Well, what a great addition he's been to this offense, and especially during the span that Calvin Johnson has been out or been limited because of the injury. Pierce, you know, he's still going he's as tough as they come, so he's battling through that back, but hopefully he'll be able to continue through this game. Penalty flag comes down. That's more than just really kind of the backfield that we wait on the penalty. Illegal contact, number 55. Defense, penalty will be declined. The result of the play is a first down. Look, that's where the penalty came from. Oh, he might have got the, the number wrong. It's Prince Shembo, number 53. That was in coverage on Kellen Davis. Talked about the offense changing when Jim Caldwell came in and they hired Joe Lombardi as the offensive coordinator and spent seven years with the New Orleans Saints, the last five as quarterback coach for Drew Brees. And first time for him to call plays in the NFL. Of course, his grandfather was the great Vince Lombardi, but heavily influenced by his experience with the New Orleans Saints. And that's the offense that they're running here in Detroit now. Stafford there and we'll have to take another look to see if that was too low or Riddick just couldn't get his hands on it. Well it it was not a good throw and it's one that Matthew Stafford has to put on him and allow him to run. You see the the ball's a little bit low but at the same time it, it looked like Riddick came out of the route actually it was a better pass than what I expected. It was a little bit low but one that he's got to be able to catch and stay on the move and if he does Tom you said it there was, there was nobody there I and mean, that's a huge play. That was a big problem for this Lions team a year ago. Dropped passes. Third down at 10. And able to slip a tackle. And, and then leapfrog a defender is Jeremy Ross. How about that? First of all, the ball location by Matthew Stafford allows Ross to come back. And when you make that move, you better have a lot of confidence you're going to clear it. That's all I'm saying. You don't want to get it at any further? No, preferably not. I don't blame you. <laughs> Can't think of a better time for the two-minute warning. Detroit trying to get on the board before halftime. Detroit with a football at the Atlanta 45-yard line. Two minutes to play, and the Lions have all three timeouts remaining, trailing 21-0. They're going to blow everything to a stop before the cheerleaders can uh, make their way off the field out of the end zone. without all three of his top tight ends, without Calvin Johnson, without Reggie Bush. They're trying to find somebody to make a play. Well, it's pretty nifty right there by Golden Tate. Very close to a first down, and after meeting with that guy for about 10 minutes, I don't know about you, Troy Aikman, I think you would agree, play on my team all day, every day. Yeah, and that's why I'm surprised that Seattle let him go, and maybe if they had known they were going to trade Percy Harvin, he never would have left. I just thought he was... You know, really one of those Seattle type guys a Pete Carroll type guy, but he has found a home in Detroit Stafford just throws it away you know, I talked about Matthew Stafford and the job that he's done you know last year in the second half of the season he had a hard time you know not turning the ball over, too many interceptions. They were off to the great start. They end up not making the playoffs. 
this year without some key guys without Calvin Johnson and and you know others Reggie Bush has missed some time as well in the last four games he's only thrown three interceptions I mean he has protected the football and that's been important because and some of those weren't even his fault but that's been important in allowing them to have some of the success they've had winning three of the last four That looked like once more a wide open receiver. Now Riddick couldn't handle the last one. This one certainly appeared to be low. Yeah, this was a low throw and, and good protection. Ball came out a little odd. You know, I mean, they've always talked about his mechanics. I think some of it's been cleaned up with Joe Lombardi and, and Jim Caldwell. But you saw the release point there on that throw, which is, you know, it, it varies. I think it's hard to be accurate when you're continually changing the launch angle of how you're throwing the football. I play this drive, it's a third down and 10. Great protection this time, and it's intercepted. Thrown into, it appeared double if not triple coverage inside the 20, and Robert Alford, who had two interceptions in a game against Baltimore last week, gets another here. Well, he's trying to go to Corey Fuller, and look, yep, Fuller had slipped down, and, and that's a timing throw. So there's going to be tight coverage, but if Corey Fuller is able to maintain his footing, he's then in a position to make a play on the ball, and he's then in front of the defender. And as a quarterback, you, you have to trust that your receiver is going to keep his footing and he's not going to slip. But we talked about it coming in, Tom, the conditions of this field and how it could very easily be a factor in this game, and it was a factor right there on the interception. Well, if you're Matt Ryan and the Atlanta Falcons with 114 left and you have two timeouts, are they going to try and get down the field? It appears so. He was going to throw it on first down. He'll dive up to the 24, and he's going to hurry him up to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, no question. I mean, there's two timeouts, a lot of time. You've got a veteran quarterback who operates well, you know, in the no huddle, but yet they're going to slow this thing down again, which surprises me after picking up six yards. But I think Mike Smith tells Dirk Cutter, hey, you know, we're pretty happy up three touchdowns, and let's not try to do too much here. Hey, 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 former hey, head bingo. coach at the collegiate level Sunday, at Arizona Sunday, State Sunday, University. Sunday, Sunday. Go. Spill. Get on what will be more than likely barring a timeout. The final play of the quarter. Tell you, Atlanta's had a lot of success under Mike Smith. Unprecedented success in Falcons franchise history. Kurt, Terry, Howie. Apparently some of those guys out of bed now. Yeah. Well, I know Jimmy didn't have a problem getting up early. I mean, you can go visit him in the Florida Keys, and he'll still go to bed at 8 o'clock. I mean, whether you flew all the way in or not, it doesn't matter. His bedtime's his bedtime, and he gets up early. That's where you got it from. Discipline. <laughs> Let's go right to Kurt Menefee in Los Angeles for the Visa Halftime All Falcons here in London. And Carissa Thompson, Tom Brenneman, delighted to have you with us on this early Sunday morning back in the United States of America and so far in this first half Troy I don't know about you but I don't know if anybody saw 21 nothing Atlanta coming well I sure didn't didn't anticipate that and I didn't think that the Detroit defense would play as bad as they've played here in this first half you know we talked about it coming in Tom the offensive line for the Falcons number of injuries a number of young players up there that have not played well in recent weeks this is supposed to be the number one defense in football they have not hardly hit Matt Ryan. They've not sacked him. A defensive front has not been a factor in this game, and I think they're going to have to be in the second half if they're going to have any kind of chance of winning. Today's excitement is brought to you by Nissan. And the Falcon fans have to be excited about Matt Ryan. I mean, when you give this guy protection, he has proven since leaving Boston College how deadly he can be throwing the football. And that he has been so far here today when given the time to throw it. I'm a big fan of Matt Ryan's ever since he came into the league. And, you know, he's a guy who can play at a very high level, as you said, if given protection. And he's been afforded that here this afternoon. 
Let's check in downstairs with Carissa Thompson. Thank you very much. You guys have been talking about it upstairs, and the Detroit Lions will not blame the score on the field. But being down here, I will tell you this, it is definitely torn up. You see it here. The grounds crew spent all of halftime picking up the remnants of the grass. It's a very soft grass, and it's also very short. I asked Wembley Stadium uh, grounds crew if there was any sort of special treatment they did to the field. They said, no, it's only rained once over the last few days, but Tim O'Neill is the equipment manager for the Lions. He consulted with the Oakland Raiders who have been here once and did bring a longer cleat, a detachable one, so we'll see if that makes a difference, guys. And that uh, same uh, sentiment set good by Terry Robisky as that is incomplete. Troy Aikman was visiting with him down on the field before the game. Well, I would have to believe that the Detroit Lions, you know, they have been affected by it. Both these teams have. But Corey Fuller is the one who slipped, and then you have the interception, which keeps the Lions from getting any points on that drive before the end of the half. But you come out in pregame warm-ups, check out the field. I would be shocked if they weren't all in the longer cleats before this game ever started. I can't imagine any of them having to go to anything longer based on what they had practiced on, you know, in pregame warm-ups. Joy Bell in his secondary, and he is very close to a first down. Ran right through Kamal Ishmael, and it looked like he might just be inches away from a first down. A little more than that. They're going to spot that. Yep, just inches away. Joy Bell's a load now. 5'11", 229 pounds. They bring in an extra offensive lineman. And they have Bell in the eye behind Jed Collins. And it's Bell. Breaks a couple of tackles, and that's a powerful running style we were talking about from Joy Bell. Well, Joy Bell was fortunate because you know, we just got done talking about the field conditions and then third and short, and he's bouncing that wide. And Atlanta had an opportunity to stop him short of that first down. He could have gotten in behind his fullback, Jed Collins, and picked that up pretty easily. So he decided to bounce it and is able to pick it up anyway. More than double the number of yards offensively for Atlanta in the first half as Detroit. And on first down, first possession of the second half, Stafford goes high. And an eye on Golden Tate. Well, we've shown that they bring in the extra offensive lineman, Travis Swanson, and they kept him in there on first down. So it's a running personnel group. And then off of that, they want to go play action and try to take a shot towards the sideline. Now, defender, you see, he's running underneath that route of Golden Tate, so Stafford has to put it up high. But Golden Tate, this this isn't Megatron at 6'6". This is Golden Tate at 5'10". He's just unable to go up and make the catch. Fuller, and that is a first down up to midfield. Corey Fuller last week, he had the game winner against the Saints, and, and I spoke earlier, he's gotten more opportunities because of Calvin Johnson's injury, but I like this guy. He hasn't played a lot of football, but they say he follows Calvin Johnson around during the week, and whatever Calvin does, he does. If, if Calvin runs after practice, then Corey runs after practice. If Calvin catches balls after practice, well, then you know what Corey's doing. And But he has been... A good player here in recent weeks, and at least has given Matthew Stafford another target. First carry for George Wynn in his first year out of Cincinnati. Corey Fuller was a guy who was on the practice squad all of last year. A sixth round pick. He's an interesting story in that when he began college, he ran track at Kansas University. It was only then after two years that he transferred to Virginia Tech to be a football player. Yeah, I don't know how these guys do it, you know, that are limited in their experience of any kind of football. We see it time out. around Atlanta, the league. First team time out. Julius Thomas is a guy in Denver that go on and have really nice careers in the NFL. Timeout on the field, Detroit on the move.
Game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. By Chevrolet. Find new roads. By Bud Light, who reminds fans to stay in the game and drink responsibly. And by Burger King. For a limited time, get 10 chicken nuggets for just $1.49. Second down for the Lions, and spinning away from the would-be tackler is Bell, but he cannot avoid. Nice play made coming up in the secondary by Josh Wilson. We look at some of the offensive leaders, and for this Lions team, again, if you're just joining us, they don't have Calvin Johnson, they don't have Reggie Bush, they don't have any of their three top tight ends. No, and you see the job that this Atlanta defense has done. You know, I mean, part of it is, yeah, you mentioned it, the, the Lions without being, without some key guys, at the same time, you know, let's not discount what this what this defense has done for Atlanta. They've been able to make some stops. And they just haven't given up much so far for this Lions offense. Third down and nine. Stafford finds his target across the middle of the field, and that is Golden Tate for the first down. Well, what a game he had a week ago without Calvin Johnson. Ten catches, a career best 154 yards. Yeah, you think about last week, they were down 13 points and a you know, pretty short throw from Matthew Stafford, and he takes it the distance and, you know, put him right back in that game. I mean, you can almost say that he's the reason that they ultimately were able to win. They got the turnover as well by Glover, but he has made play after play for this team. He's off to the best best start of his career. And off to a, another former Notre Dame alum, Theo Riddick. You know, Golden Tate in Seattle, where they run the ball a lot more. We know all about that. And Marshawn Lynch, and that's where he's spent his first four years in the league. He only had three 100-yard games in his career before coming to the Lions this year, and already in the first Six games of these seven games of the year, he has three 100-yard receiving games. I like what he said when I asked him if he likes Detroit. He said, I just like that they want me here, you know, and just didn't feel like he was really all that appreciated while he was in Seattle. And didn't like the way it ended for him there either. Short of the first down is really You know, the one thing I really liked about him too, Troy, is he did say that, but he didn't rip anybody. He didn't go out of his way. Yeah, he has high regard for John Schneider, their general manager, very high regard for their head coach, Pete Carroll. But make no mistake, they decided to keep Percy Harvin rather than Golden Tate. Tate was their leading receiver last year when her Harvin was hurt all year long. And now they deal Harvin after a number of issues that are going on outside the playing field. Well, from what I've seen in Seattle, they, they could use Golden Tate right now. Two and they're going to throw it on third and two. And that's the first catch of the day for Ryan Broyles, one of the all-time great receivers in the history of college football. And that's not an exaggeration. He had the, the most receptions ever at the Division I level for the second most yards, but he has been hurt for three straight years. That's only his second catch all year. Yeah, high draft pick and... Just trying to get him on the field, but a nice conversion there on third down for the Detroit Lions. It's a big drive for them to come away with a touchdown and not just three points. Play the drive. They give it to Detroit Bell. Who slips his way inside the five, down to the four-yard line. I was going to say, Tom, I mean, we've seen it time after time. We saw it last week, and that went over the New Orleans Saints. I mean, when things look pretty bleak, you know, Matthew Stafford has found ways to win games for this organization. He's got as many comeback victories at this point in his career as anybody that's played the position. So there's no one within this team that feels that they're out of it at 21-0 as long as he's their quarterback. This is a great way to start this second half. Tyson Jackson. 
Oh, dodging a bullet there is Matthew Stafford in the line. Well, they're pretty fortunate, and the field comes into play once again. That's immediately where Stafford wanted to go with the ball, but as soon as he starts to look his way, Tate stumbles, and he got off him immediately. That was close. That would have been a heck of a play by the big guy. Packers! Their team play the drive. They're three out of three on third down on it. But none bigger than this one. Trailing 21-0. And it's incomplete as Stafford took a hit as soon as he threw it. It looked like, again, it was O.C. Yuminura who had a sack earlier in the game. I couldn't tell if, if Yuminura got his arm or part of the ball. And, yeah, as soon as he started to throw it, it looked like there was, there was contact then to the arm, which is what drove the ball right into the turf. So a good stop. The Detroit Lions take the opening drive of the second half. They drive down inside the five, and the Falcons tighten up and force them into a field goal. So now Prater. Lions field goal kickers this year are six out of 16, and they're on their third place kicker of the year. And not much to that one from 22 yards out. Lions on the board for the first time today. Welcome back to Wembley Stadium in London, England. We invite you to follow your favorite team all season long. Go to iTunes.com slash NFL. Well, a very, very good drive spanning 75 yards in 15 plays. Unfortunately, if you're a Lions fan, ends in three rather than six. Yeah, that's all that matters. And boy, it's deflating to move the ball that that well and get that close and, and have to settle for three points. I mean, this is a, an Atlanta defense which has just been run over through just about every game this season, including last week by Baltimore. But so far, Matthew Stafford and the Lions unable to find the end zone. Game is sponsored by Nightcrawler, starring Jake Gyllenhaal in theaters Friday. Our entire crew away from their uh, families, and we're uh, certainly grateful and fortunate to be on assignment covering the NFL on Fox here in London. Hope you're enjoying it. A couple of cities in the Eastern Time Zone. Ball is jarred loose. Knocked out of the hands from Matt Ryan. Hit coming from behind and right there to cover it up. The right tackle, Ryan Schrader. Jason Jones, it looks like, stripping that one away. Well, that's what the Detroit Lions have been looking for. Come in and they hit Matt Ryan. He wasn't prepared, but for Schrader to be able to get back in and make a play on the ball, that's a, that's a big time recovery. Give the ball back to the Lions with a short field. And Wondered about this offensive line. Would it give Matt Ryan enough time to throw the football? And the answer, at least through the first half, this is their first possession of the second half, is yes, they have. Well, they sure have. They've, they've done an outstanding job across the board. You know, three knockdowns, six hits, and have yet, well, they got the one sack there. First half, there were no sacks. The offensive line has held up much better than I anticipated against this defensive front. No fairly. But they still have a lot of talented guys. They're coming after Ryan here. And he just had to get rid of it before he took a big blow once more from Jason and Jones. Jones healthy again, only played in a couple of games before getting hurt last year and here, but again the second half, three and out. Yeah, I think Jason Jones is one of those players that you know probably doesn't get talked about as much as he should. You know, the attention typically goes to Dominican Sue and, and Nick Fairley, but He's been a good player, especially this year, for this team, and that's a great job defensively. I'm sure there was a lot of discussion there at halftime as to how they were going to be able to get pressure on Matt Ryan, and they showed it there on that drive. Jason Jones made it Michigan, and off the side of the foot, and a very, very short punt by Matt Bosher. This drive will start in Falcons territory. Detroit trying to get closer. Been a fun-filled week. Both teams getting in at the very beginning of the week. 
a number of events in and around the city. The league does an excellent job, and obviously there's been great response here in London. Three games will be played here this year. There's been at least one regular season game every year in this city, going back to 2007. Now a chance to truly make you feel like they're going to get back in this thing, although it is thrown behind the intended target, Kellen Davis, and that was nearly tipped into the air and intercepted on first down. Of the ball, you know, sometimes you play on, you know, that grass we, we talked about is a little moist. They haven't had a lot of rain in the area, but it was wet. I don't know if they watered it or what, but we've seen some throws like that get away from Matthew Stafford. I don't know if they're coming up and the ball's a little bit slick and it's slipping, but you know, that should have been an easy completion to start this drive. And so now you're behind the chains with second and long. There have been about three or four or five of those here in their last couple of possessions. That long one near the end of the first half before the interception. And now they set up the screen to Joy Bell. And the penalty flag is down behind the line of scrimmage. Bell has enough for a first down if the play stands. Holding. Number 70 offense. 10 yard penalty remains. Second down. Richard Wolf, that's a former Atlanta Falcon. Getting a start for Adrian Waddle, Garrett Reynolds. That's Garrett Reynolds at, at right tackle, and I don't know about that one. I mean, you got the spin move there up front by Stansley Maponga, and it looked to me like he just lost his footing, and Garrett Reynolds goes down with him. I, I don't know that that should have been a holding call, and now the Lions are a drive that started with great okay. field position, and now they're looking at second and 20. a penalty flag again after all that dancing around by Matthew Stafford. Thrown all the way back into 30-yard line. Terry Corey Fuller, he's coming off as though he Personal might have injured foul. his right shoulder. Blindside block, number 70. Offense, 15-yard penalty, still second down. That's another penalty back-to-back -back on Garrett Reynolds. Didn't look like he earned one a moment ago. How about here? Helmet to helmet. Now well, that first call on Garrett Reynolds, they had the first down. There's Corey Fuller going down on that right shoulder. He's grabbing for it immediately. He comes off the field and, you know, just a bad call on the first hold on Garrett Reynolds. Should not have been a penalty. And they're able to, they, otherwise it's first down. And <laughs> second and 35, I don't know if Joe Lombardi learned anything from Sean Payton for this down or not. I don't think his granddad had anything for second 35 as great as he was. Yeah, he did. It was toss sweep. <laughs> they go in and need to get some of it back. Theo Riddick spins out of a tackle. This drive began at the Detroit 44-yard line. Well, new this season, stream live local Sunday afternoon games right on your smartphone with NFL Mobile. They need to get to the 34, which they did get beyond the 34 on the first down catch and run by Bell. Well, I, I think you take a shot down the field and hope for a catch, or if nothing else, maybe you get a pass interference. Well, the good news is they have Corey Fuller back on the field after limping off a moment ago. Looking for that shot down the field, and there is Golden Tate, and that is a touchdown. Stafford bought himself some time, and he finds his number one target without Calvin Johnson, and that is Golden Tate, a 59-yard touchdown. He got behind Kamal Ishmael. The Atlanta Falcons are playing too deep, and then they pass him off to the safety, and now it's one-on-one, -on -one, and Kamal Ishmael he just can't allow that to happen. Talked about it earlier. Mike Smith said we've just given up way too many big plays down the field and to give up a touchdown on third and 25 is really inexcusable to get beat the way Ishmael just got beat. You just can't allow a receiver to get in behind you 
the way that Golden Tate was able to. And that is a record-breaking touchdown pass for Matthew Stafford. Came in tied with a Hall of Famer Bobby Lane, 118. Atop the Lions leaderboard, and now one name sits atop. Matthew Stafford will keep that football. Congratulations, young man. It's a 21-10 game. Game five, a big one tonight. And big game, James Shields. Learn that nickname in his days with Tampa Bay, trying to deliver the goods for Kansas City tonight against Madison Bumgarner. Joe Buck, Carol Reynolds, Tom Verducci, Aaron Andrews, Ken Rosenthal, the cast of thousands from San Francisco tonight. Right here on Fox, 7 o'clock Eastern time. A little different ball game here. An extraordinary drive when you just can say, I say drive all the three plays. It seemed like it lasted for about nine minutes with all the penalties that put him behind the eight ball. Yeah, I mean, Atlanta, you know, the, the good drive by Detroit to start this half, and then they have to settle for three points. The defense gets them off the field, and third, third and 25 touchdown the Golden Tate. 11 points is nothing with a quarter and more to play for the Lions. And you can see this field further and further getting chewed up. Something Troy and Carissa Thompson talked about before the game. Carissa? Yeah, Troy, to elaborate on your point, you were asking if Matthew Stafford was, you know, having the ball slip out of his hands because the grass was wet. It's not, it's just a little bit moist. It's not necessarily wet, but I have to say, talking to the grounds crew, they said it didn't rain last night. It sprinkled a couple days ago, but Atlanta doesn't seem to be having as much trouble with it, you guys. They made the decision to switch out their cleats on Wednesday, and they've been practicing on Arsenal's field, which is the exact same grass as this, whereas Detroit's been practicing on a hybrid of grass and AstroTurf, the rugby field. Great stuff, Carissa. Thank you very much. Missile, missile! Sunday, Sunday. Ready, go! Try to get to the line of scrimmage and get some flow back into this offense. Catch is made, but a penalty flag behind the line of scrimmage. Illegal use of hands, hands to the face. Number 73. 10-yard penalty, still first down. Ryan Schrader is starting today in place of Gabe Karimi. Yeah, we did a nice completion there and that was the grab and an easy one to call. So now the Falcons, we saw what the Lions were able to do when they started getting backed up on their last drive. And, you know, first and 20 is a hard place to start from, especially when you're backed up where they are now. Rodgers out of the backfield, up to the 16-yard line. You know, I was talking to wide receiver coach Terry Robiski before the game, and he spent a long time with the with the Raiders when they were in Oakland. He said this field today is exactly like the field that they played on there at there in Oakland. And he said Al Davis, he would he would have water the field. You know, it was a huge advantage for the Raiders. They were accustomed to playing on this type of grass and the conditions. Here's Ryan and that's in Dominican Sue. One of the few times we've called his name today. There is a flag on the far side of the field all the way up to the 35-yard line. Number 31, defense, five-yard penalty, automatic, first down. Wow, how about that? Well, that was called on Rasheen Mathis. He's on Julio Jones, and they're trying to run a double move. He knows he's beat, and then he makes contact, so that's... That's a, good, that's a good call there, and here's Ndamukong Sue, who's able to get past Azamoa in what appeared to be a, a sack, but now Atlanta, who was looking at first and 20, they, they get the automatic first down. Whenever you see Sue get tangled up with Matt Ryan, you think about that play a couple of years ago, and some of the Falcons felt like Sue was caught as Patrick DeMarco takes 
strikes a major league hit right there from DeAndre Levy. But you know, some of the, the the Falcons felt like that Sue was was taunting after putting a big hit on Matt Ryan, and Sue said, "Not anywhere close to being true." If you're going to believe that. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I don't know what all you know happens and where Sue fits into all. I know when you talk to him in person, he's the most gentle, nicest yep. guy in the world. the kind of running we saw from Steven Jackson during his first nine years in a league playing with the Rams eight straight 1,000 yard rushing years yeah you're not kidding I mean this is his style and this is what we saw so many times when he's with the Rams Sue's got his arms on him and some others had opportunities to make a play and he's just a load at a guy his size 240 pounds and you know, he's 31 years old now, and you, know, you don't see as many of those runs as, as we saw earlier in his career. Back-to-back -back carries for Jackson. So here well, we see the third and the first and 25, third and 25 for the Lions. They throw the touchdown pass, and after penalty to start this drive back inside their 15-yard line, the Falcons are able to overcome a first down in 20. Well, they're able to overcome it with another penalty to Rasheen Mathis. You know, you remember the interception there in the first half, and he got called on that one. He gets called on another one, taking the fake on the double move. This is a big defensive possession for the Lions after gaining some momentum and cutting this game to 11 points. For the football, it looks like White may have gotten it back. It's almost impossible to believe with nothing but white jerseys that the one red jersey found that ball. How about that? For him to be able to get back on this ball, we saw it earlier with Ryan Schrader when they sacked Matt Ryan, and a, as you said, a lot of white jerseys around there. And Usually when you got to stretch out like that, when there's defenders in the area, you're not able to pull it in. But Roddy White able to recover it. A nice work. And oh my goodness. It is intercepted and inside the 10-yard line is Cassius Vaughn. A critical mistake made by Matt Ryan. And now the Lions are really in business after that 43-yard return. I don't know what Matt Ryan saw, but he was under duress in the pocket. He's trying to keep the play alive, but there was nobody other than Vaughn, you know, really in the area. He had one receiver to the towards the sideline. You can get a good look at it here. As he flushes to his left, he comes back. Vaughn's not covering anybody. And the only one that was even close to being a targeted receiver was Julio Jones, but that couldn't have been what Matt Ryan saw. I think he just saw a body out there and didn't realize it was a white jersey and just turned it loose, and a huge mistake setting up the Lions. On first and goal, they'll hand it off to Theo Riddick. He's inside the five, inside the three, down to the two-yard line. Two yards away from a chance to make this a four-point game that is the final play of the third quarter of quarter dominated by Detroit back after a word from your local Fox station set to begin the fourth quarter here in London's Wembley Stadium 21 nothing game at halftime Detroit with 10 points they get the interception they overcame a 14-point deficit in the final minutes, 13-point deficit in the final minutes last week against New Orleans. And they have the ball second and goal from the two-yard line and right back to the line of scrimmage. It's Joy Bell. It's a nice play made by Lowry. Well, and like last week, Tom, it, it took a, a defensive play, you know, really in order to, to make that happen when, when Glover was able to, Glover Quinn, was able to make the interception and give him the short field and you know this time it's Cassius Vaughn and the defense far different unit from what we saw in the first 30 minutes of this game. Of course Cassius Vaughn was just 
just in a good spot, wasn't it? Yes, he was. Blitz coming. And not sure what happened there. Golden Tate was open. You see the communication, Golden Tate. I don't know if he surprised him. Stafford immediately went to his helmet like, you know, either he had made an errant throw or Golden Tate didn't quite do what he anticipated. Based on the communication of Tate after the play ended, it, it appears that there was a miscommunication on what each other was thinking. So a field goal try by Prater. He hit from 22, his only attempt today. That's a big defensive stop right there by the Falcons. We have nearly an entire quarter to play. But 21-13 rather than 21-17 after the interception. Well, Matt Ryan will go over there and thank every defender for being able to make this stop. Here's the interception which set up the Lions. And you don't need to say much about that. Just a terrible decision by Matt Ryan. But Cassius Vaughn, I mean, how about Julio Jones being able to make a play and what saved a touchdown and four points after they had to settle for a field goal and a, a disappointing offensive possession then for Detroit not being able to punch that in with really great field position to start the drive. Well, they ran it on first down to get it down to the two-yard line, and they can't punch it in. Second and goal from the two. Well, that was a big-time stop by Atlanta. Being able to get off the field, but it is... It is now a one possession game. So you know, pressure right back on Atlanta. An offense that looked so good in the first half of this game. It you know, really has stumbled around here in the second half. And this defense starting to gain a lot of momentum of their own. And by how this Falcons team has stumbled in the final quarter. We'll see if they can get that ironed out with 14 10 to go. Hester's going to bring this one out right from the goal line. And not a wise decision. He's tackled at the 15. We'd love to welcome our men and women in uniform serving around the world watching our broadcast today in 175 countries and aboard ships at sea on AFN, the American Forces Network. God bless you all. Standing tall and strong for the greatest country we believe in the world. Nice to be here in London, and we're also wearing some commemorative pens as they celebrate Armistice Day, going all the way back to the end of World War One. Sunday, Sunday. Gotta go. On first down, they hand it to Quiz Rogers. They have a copy as a symbol, and that's what we're wearing on our lapels today of loss during that. First World War. The poppy was one of the first flowers to bloom in the wastelands on the battlefields following World War I. They've been worn all over this entire city and this entire country. And Mike Smith doing the same today. Well, Mike Smith has looked concerned throughout this game, and even in the first half, he's really he's really concerned right now. Down the middle of the field, that's a big completion right there. Glover Quinn was about to deliver a big hit after the catch by Whitey White. He was able to get down for a first down. Well, Matt Ryan hangs in there, and we talked about James Stone making his first start at center. He gets tangled up. He's right in the lap of Matt Ryan, but not enough to affect the throw. So a good job of picking up that first down and keeping this drive going. Got it set up for Harry Douglas, DeAndre Levy. Well, I tell you what, we, we brought up his name earlier. Levy had an outstanding year. He has been a starter since day one when he entered the league as a third round pick in 09. As a linebacker, had six interceptions a season ago. Yeah, they really rave about him and the job that he has done and the way he has played, you know, really throughout his career, but off to another great start this season. Oh, 
Down and long, Ashley Palmer there on the tackle. You look at the third downs, and this was a point of emphasis for the Falcons coming into the game after the way they have struggled here in recent weeks and not being able to sustain drives. They've been good. They've been good throughout this game, but this is this is an important one. They were 10 for 41 on third down the last three games, and the ball. Is loose. It looked like Ezekiel Anza stripped it away. And once more, so fortunate for the Lions. That's the third time today, and they recover a fumble. Three times the Lions have forced a fumble. Twice, offensive linemen have been able to come up with the ball. Matt Ryan unable to hang on to it the first time. Ryan Schrader recovers it, keeps them from giving the ball to the Lions with a short field. This time, Jake Matthews recovers it. Another big break for the Falcons. But it is the punt unit coming after this one and able to get it away is Boschen. Their catch at the 31-yard line for Jeremy Ross. Well, Matthews able to find the ball after he allowed the hit on Ryan. And now a chance to tie with a touchdown and a two-point conversion. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Amazon's new Fire HD. Powerful tablet, breakthrough price. By Nissan, innovation that excites. And by Taco Bell, sometimes you gotta live moss. All right, in the Eastern time zone, Detroit, Atlanta, everywhere else, high noon. An early good afternoon to you. Central time zone, 11 o'clock, out in Denver. And in the mountain, 10 a.m. L.A., nothing to watch in football now at 9 o'clock in the morning. And in Honolulu, a very good morning. 6 a.m. First down, trailing by 8. And Joy Bell crosses the 35-yard line. We have 11.15 to go. I think a lot of times, uh, Troy, the fans watching the game, I mean, I, I sit here and have the, the fortune of watching football every week, and you say to yourself, depending on which team you're rooting for, how does something go so well the first half and nothing the second half or the other way? Just, just kind of the way the game goes oftentimes, Tom, but yeah, with the Lions especially, you can't ever take whatever happens in any half for granted going into the next one. Holding tape, bouncing off tackles, taking hits, and keep on rolling. That'll be a first down. Well, here's Golden Tate. You talked about him a little bit earlier as far as his toughness. and He's battling through the back injury that he suffered early in this game, and he just keeps going. I mean, I've admired his competitiveness you know, while he was with Seattle and brought you know he's brought a lot to this team with the injuries and of course where would they be without him but I think he's brought some real toughness to this offense too. Okay. He, he was something for the Fighting Irish solid in Seattle. You can't ask for better the numbers and he's putting up. They pitch it back to Stafford who's looking down the field and not anywhere near the intended receiver Golden Tate. It looked initially like they might have something. They had two receivers, Golden Tate and Corey Fuller, down the field on two safeties. And Corey Fuller, you know, he didn't look like he really knew exactly where he was supposed to be going. And But it looked initially like they'd have an opportunity to at least get a completion off of it. Of course, they, they run that off of the run and then turn the pitch it back to Matthew Stafford. One of the things that would really help this offense right now for Detroit yeah, yeah, yeah. is if they got a little bit more out of their running game because it has not been easy sledding for them. Only 50 rushing yards for the Lions. Screen on the backfield, and that is excellent running by Joy Bell, and appears to have enough for a first down to the 45-yard line. It really was, Tom, because he had to go get that first down. He knew exactly where he needed to get to to pick it up. And so a short completion 
to Joyke Bell. He's got the screen. He's got Lyman in front of him, but you know, he makes a couple people miss, and then he finishes the run at the end and picks up that first down. It's just a nice job on his part. Talk about what a nice year he had last year. Had over 500 yards rushing, 500 receiving. And these are the numbers we were talking about a moment ago. First half, second half. Staggering differential. Beerman wraps up. Bell, who carries to the 40. That'll be a four-yard gain. The Falcons, they see Matt Ryan. And we talked about it. he's been fortunate a couple times. The ball's come out of his hands. He had the interception. But the Falcons, boy, they've just been hanging on here in this second half. Now we brought up earlier inside the NFC South, at least the way it's gone through the first seven now, the start of the eighth week of the season. They are very much in this divisional race, despite being two and five and losers of four in a row. They need this game bad. Good protection. What a hit. Delivered by Lowry on George Wynn out of the backfield. Well, that's one I'm a little surprised that Stafford even tried to complete that one because you could tell right away it was going to be a big collision. So now another big third down as we are closing in on eight minutes to go. 8.19 to play. You see the numbers on Stafford. Without Calvin Johnson, without Reggie Bush. Well, Golden Tate's in the slot. That's the guy I'd be looking for. There's Golden Tate, Troy Serpent. He's been the best target. And this time it's Fuller across the middle, and that is a first down to the 25-yard line. He beat Desmond Trufant, and they will move the chains. Corey Fuller once again. You know, he's made some nice catches in this game and got him on a crossing route with man coverage. Does a good job of hauling that one in. It's a high ball. It's one that NFL receivers are expected to catch, but for such a young guy on a third down play, it was a nice job. Leave the numbers on their receivers. The University of Kansas Jayhawk. And Virginia Tech Hokey Fuller is third in the game. And now Bell back on the ground inside the 25. That'll be a three-yard pick up on first down. You know, Jim Caldwell, in talking to him about the running game, Tom, you know, I asked him if he was concerned about it. He said he was concerned about the inconsistency that late in games, when they've had to close games out with their running game, they've been able to do that. And that's the hardest time to run the football. And it's a mystery, really, why they haven't run the ball better at other parts of the game. They have continued to try to run it on first down in the second half and on this drive, but they really haven't had a lot to show for it. Nice play on the drive. That is a first down, or close to a first down. It looks like they're going to spot it. Maybe just short. That was maybe a, a poor spot, at least from what I can tell. It looked like he got a little bit more out of that from, than where the officials came in and marked him down. I've got to believe, though, leave the field. I've got to believe, Tom, this is four-down territory for the Detroit Lions. You look at how much time is left. You know, field goal really does not help them much. They still need a touchdown. That should affect what Joe Lombardi's thinking as far as the call here. Third in the yard, and they give it to the fullback. And Jed Collins picks up the first down as we wind our way down to six minutes left to go. A first half dominated by Atlanta. A second half dominated until they've gotten in the red zone where the Lions have been unable, except for the one time, to get into the end zone for a touchdown. Well, they've been down here. A couple of times, you said they got down to the two-yard line and couldn't get it in. So, see if this Atlanta Falcons defense can tighten up here. Stafford, the screen to Joy Bell. Spins out of one tackle. 
That young man runs hard. It is first and goal down to the five-yard line. Spun away from Paul Warlow. Well, they have Dominic Riola the center. They have it set up pretty nice, and Riola misses his guy. And you see it's Warlow that's in a position, and Joyke Bell just stiff arms him and is able to break the tackle. You know, we've seen him make some people miss and turn some really short gains into some big plays and keeping the chains alive. This is another one. I mean, it looked like Warlow was there to make a play on him and right away, and instead, Joyke Bell picks up the first down. We're under five minutes to go. First down and goal for the Lions. Trailing by eight. Big hit by Kamal Ishmael. And maybe a one-yard gain. You see this clock go down, Tom. It you know, each play then becomes more and more important for the Detroit Lions. And Matt Ryan, he's watching that clock and just wants it to keep ticking. And hopefully, you know, his defense able to make a stop and not allow the Lions to get a touchdown and try to go for two to tie, tie this game up. Fake it to Golden Tate. And that is a touchdown throw to Theo Riddick. To bring the Lions within two. Now, if you're wondering, only one time all year long had the Lions gone for a two-point conversion. That was in a week one blowout of the Giants on their final score of the game. Well-designed play here. As you see Riddick, he comes out of the backfield. They run, as you said, the fake reverse to Golden Tate. They pull him out the other way. Get everybody flowing one direction. Get the back coming the opposite way. And an easy touchdown for Detroit. A great job of finishing this drive, but you're right, Tom. Now it's a matter of whether or not they can get this two-point conversion. If you're wondering on their other two-point conversion try, they threw it to the tight end, Fourier. They're going right back to the well. There appeared to be contact. Tate looking for a call. Stafford looking for a flag. It doesn't come. True fight on the coverage. It is still a two-point game. They try to tie it, clearly contact, no flag. Some of the sights and English rock and roll bass sounds from London. Roger Daltrey and the Who, among some of the biggest acts that have ever come out of this part of the world. They had a band called the Beatles and another called the Rolling Stones. Thank you for that. <laughs> Visit with Mike Pereira back in Los Angeles up in Adam early this morning. And we come back after the this kickoff, which is blasted out of the or into the end zone and taking a knee. We're gonna ask Mike Pereira, should this have been a flag giving Detroit another two-point try? Game is sponsored by the new Samsung Galaxy S5. The next big thing is here. All right, Mike Pereira back in Los Angeles, seemingly a billion hours away from here. Did you think a flag should have been thrown on that two-point try? Yeah, I do think it should, probably for the fact that you actually have holding on the play, because look where it happens, right at the line of scrimmage. Remember, the ball's at the two, so really you don't have pass interference that occurs at the line of scrimmage, but he hooks him and holds him. Trufant with the left arm. So, you know, I think that's the case. If you just blocked them, fine. But that grab with the left arm to me is enough for a foul, even though it occurred at the line of scrimmage. Very late night watching college football here on Fox was Mike Pereira and then up and at him long before the first rays of sunshine out west in Los Angeles. So we thank him for being with us and he'll be with us all day long. That's a good first down carry as now we are at 340 and counting. Lions trailing by two. They have three timeouts left. Well, Golden Tate, you saw his reaction to the play. He thought it was a clear hold as well, as did Matthew Stafford and everyone else watching. I think the Falcons themselves were surprised to get away with that one. But now we'll see what the Lions are able to do defensively in being able to stop the running game when they know that's what the Falcons are going to do. 
Nick Fairley was injured very early in this game. They had to take him to the locker room right away. On second down, they give it to Jackson. He tries to bulldoze his way for a yardage and loses a couple of yards. He is stood up by E. Hedimo. So at the three minute mark, 304. Did the Lions call a timeout? Yes. So 304 left. The Lions have two timeouts remaining. A big third down when we return. College football returns to Fox Saturday. Stanford and Oregon. Coverage begins at 6.30 Eastern, only on Fox, and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Stanford has stood in the way of the Oregon Ducks in getting to a national championship game in recent years. Here it is third down and five. Biggest third down of the game for the Falcons, leading by two. Four-man rush. And what a catch made by Douglas. That is a first down to the 38-yard line, first time back in five weeks for Harry Douglas. That is a great catch by Harry Douglas. This is a ball. It's not an easy play to make, and he's able to stretch out, not only pull it in, but then secure the catch as he goes to the ground. Matt Ryan had to hang in the pocket. He's got a man right in his face. That is a great conversion on third down between those two. Well, there'll be one more play that must be run before the two-minute warning. This is first down. The Lions have two timeouts left. Steven Jackson lost the yard. The Lions will take their second timeout, which leaves Detroit with one. And we have a chance to check in back in Los Angeles, a game break with Kurt Menefee. Hi, Kurt. Hi, Tom. Well, you guys are the lone early, early game. We'll get to our normal slate of regular games when you're done, highlighted by Tom Brady and the Patriots hosting the Chicago Bears. Meanwhile, J.J. Watt and the Texans take their show on the road to Tennessee. We'll talk about that game and many more when Terry, Howie, Jimmy, and Michael join me, plus special input from Bears fan Bill Murray talking about his team, Tom and Troy. Had a chance a number of years ago to, to work a couple of events with Bill Murray. You guys are going to have a good time in the studio with him today. Tell you what, you look at this with 210, one timeout left, and if they run the ball here and Detroit makes a play, they call another timeout, and then they still have the two-minute warning. And this is a first down and in some for Julio Jones. It'll take us to the two-minute warning. And every bit as importantly, if not more importantly, a fresh set of downs. Perfectly executed 22-yard game. Can the Falcons hang on in London? Two minutes to go. Detroit with one timeout left, trailing by two. First down for the Falcons at the Lions' 40-yard line. And they pitch it to Devontae Freeman. He is tackled from behind, and that'll stop the clock five seconds off the clock from a two-minute warning. Well, you look at the two catches in this drive, and the first one being a big third down reception by Harry Douglas. Just an outstanding job of making the play, and then the last one to Julio Jones on second down, knowing that it was going to be hard to run the football, and on second down they throw it, a safe throw at the wide receiver screen, and it picks up a nice gain. Most importantly, it picks up the first down. And now with the Detroit Lions out of timeout, the Falcons can run this down pretty far. I want to thank our producer today, Richie Sines, our director, Rich Russo, associate directors, Jake Jolivet and Rich Gross. Alex Olson and Brando oh, Tara Lavaro, our broadcast associates, flag down, which is going to stop the clock. Oh. And if this is a hold against Atlanta, it came in the area that you would think it is. Yep, hold against Atlanta. 
Holding number 62. The penalty is declined. Third down. Well, that is that is one silly penalty right there. I did, although this young man today has done an outstanding job, James Stone. Well, people ask, you know, why don't you just take a knee if you're going to run the ball and so you don't have holding penalties like this, but they're trying to get the first down to not give the ball back to Detroit at all. But this becomes a huge third down now for Atlanta. And do you run it and give the ball to Detroit more than likely, unable to pick up the first down with Matthew Stafford in a fair amount of time, or do you try to take a shot or what's the game? and risk stopping the clock with an incomplete pass? Without that holding penalty, there would be roughly one minute left in this game. Same play, and it's an incomplete pass. Now think about this for a second. As it's decision time on whether you try what would be a very, very long field goal, you, you don't believe they're going to try it from 57 and then give them great field no position, so they're going to punt. They're going to punt. And, Tom, I, I really am surprised. I mean, I set it up that they maybe do either. I really thought they would run the football, you know, because if you don't complete the pass, even though it was a safe pass, it's the same throw they tried with Julio Jones when they did get the first down. This time, they're unable to at least secure the catch. That was the most important part of that play, not even necessarily getting the first down. Wow, now you give the ball to Detroit. No timeouts, but this is a lot of time for Matthew Stafford. And it's a guy who's proven many times in a short amount of time that he's more than capable of leading his team to a late win. Well, that's right, and, and they don't need a touchdown. You know, I mean, that's the biggest difference. If there's all this time, and all they have to do is get into field goal range. Now, you know, who's going to be the recipient of these throws? I mean, they don't have Calvin Johnson. They don't have Brandon Pettigrew. They don't have some key guys. But Golden Tate, as we saw, he's capable of getting down the field and coming up with some big plays, and Corey Fuller's been good in this game, too. Tell you what, Mike Smith has to feel like he's ready to pull all that white hair out. He calls for a run play, holding penalty on the offensive line. As easy a pass reception as a player can make, and Jones drops it. And now the Lions are given a chance. You just saw 13 game-winning drives, including last Sunday, to beat New Orleans for Matthew Stafford. Four-man rush out of his own end zone. And the catch, Golden Tate all the way up to the 39-yard line with a minute 30 to go. Well, that's the first big one that they needed. They're going to try to get chunks, and they, they get it right up the seam, and just a great job coming off the goal line and getting this drive underway. And this one just thrown out of bounds. Had to stop the clock with a minute seven left. Golden Tate in the slot. It's just vertical routes up the seam. And you got to lay it over the linebackers. You got to beat the safeties with the ball. And that's what Matthew Stafford is able to do. Golden Tate has to go up and make a play, knowing he's going to take a hit. It's an excellent job there on first down to try to win this game. Raiders career long 64, which of course is an NFL record. That goes back to a year ago when he was kicking for the Denver Broncos at mile high altitude. Over the middle and what a reception made by Theo Riddick down to the 41 yard line. Now Prater's long this season. In only six attempts as a Lion, as Stafford will spike it, stopping the clock with 49 seconds. Prater has a ton of left. Yeah, well, he, they're within range now. I mean, they're within Prater's range now. Clearly, this was a heck of a catch. I mean, to stretch out, how about that? We've seen some nice catches in this game, but Riddick, you know, Stafford almost misses him. You know, wide open, one way out in front of them, but you see the amount of space that was in the middle. That's where you have to win on that route. They're going to try to get some more yardage to make it easier. Remember, the footing conditions will not make it easy for this distance for Matt Prater. And again, when he hit that, that bomb for an NFL record, I mean, you're talking about kicking in a whole different yeah. world <laughs> uh, than here in London, literally and figuratively. Uh, but Prater, this year as a Lion, is hit from 52. This has been as lopsided in one half as it has been in the other half. First half, all Atlanta. 21-0 at the intermission. 
How about this play right here? Third and 25, Golden Tate up the sideline to really kind of ignite this Detroit team in the second half. And just real, I don't want to say mismanagement, but the holding call there on the last possession for the Falcons is what has given the Lions the opportunity that they now have. field goal try. Still plenty of time left. It's a first down and Stafford will spike it. You never know with Stafford. Don't forget we've seen him fake a spike and throw a touchdown. <laughs> well, I think him knowing that they're well within range now for Matt Prater. You can't take a sack. I, I would expect Joe Lombardi and Jim Caldwell to run the football here with 34 seconds left in this game there is time to run the ball and still spike it and allow your kicking team to get onto the field but as we see now Stafford working from underneath center and they're in their run set they could take one shot down here but it looks like they're going to run the football right now every Lions fan that has watched this season unfold they are thinking, you've got to be kidding me. We're going to rely on a field goal kicker to try and win this thing for us. And it's nothing against Prater, who had a great year in Denver, but he was suspended the first four games of this year in the substance abuse policy rule. Denver said enough of that. This season they have been through Nate Freeze. He went three out of seven. Alex Henry, one out of five, including three misses in the loss to Buffalo. Prater two for two today, four of six this year as a Lion. Not one time this year between the yards of the 40 and the 49-yard field goal attempts has a Lions kicker made a field goal. And right now it would be a 48-yard attempt. Pick up two as a flag comes in. And uh, the Lions are pointing to Atlanta's side of the field. Okay, well there. There's a flag, and it's a question as to who the penalty is on. Holding, number 96 defense. Five yard penalty automatic. First down. This field goal, I don't want to say easy, but it got a whole lot easier with this penalty. Of course, the Falcons trying to do what they can to strip the ball. Only I-96, right in the middle of the field right there. Yep. I tell you, I have a hard time seeing that one, too, but that's a call, and Raiola knew it right away. So right now, you'd be looking at a 42-yard field goal try to try and win it. He'll take a knee here, and then he's going to let the clock run down. They'll either, they'll either clock it. Yeah, that's what he's going to do. They'll clock it and allow the field goal team to come onto the field without being rushed with the clock. Well, well, well. Football and life can be funny games. Lions feel like they should have just one loss this season. Well, we saw Dominic Raiola. Here he is right here, 51. And that's where the hold was, was on him. And that's what was called. Raiola thought it was a good call. I'm not so sure. All right, here we go. Prater, the third field goal kicker the Lions have used this season. This will be from 43 yards away. Yulebach the snapper, Mark the holder, and the kick is... Delay a game, Tom. Delay they, didn't game. The, they didn't get the snap off. Or did Atlanta call a timeout? Delay of game. Offense, oh, five-yard penalty. Goodness. I was watching that play clock. It looked Perfect. like 
it had hit zero before the ball was snapped, and sometimes the officials are lenient on that call. Please set the game clock to four It ends seconds. up being a big break for the Detroit Lions. Well, it was wide right, if you're wondering. And a delay of game call is the call on the field. Everybody wanting to know exactly. You see uh, Terry Robinski out there talking to Pete Morelli. mishandled snap it looked like a low snap and then the ball was pushed right into the flag had been thrown yeah wide right wide right but wow what a finish to this game they get the delay of game Mike Smith he can't believe it so now a 48 yard field goal attempt to win it after the miss so you back Prater up five yards. We'll watch the snap in the hole. Low again. And this one is good. 22 to 21. The Lions given a second, a third, and a fourth life in the final two minutes of this game. Unbelievably win it at the gun. And Mike Smith must be just completely beside himself. Tell you, Matt Ryan is as well, and every Atlanta Falcon there is on the field right now. Just an amazing turn of events in this second half for the Detroit Lions to come out of here with a victory. You commit a penalty. You move your kicker back five yards. Second chance right there.